And thank you, Barbara, for being on the show today. Welcome to your show. Uh, and, you know, I'm glad you're not in the studio. Well, I wish I was. <laughs> really do. But really, I'm thoroughly enjoying my time at home. I'm sitting in the backyard. I just finished my brunch, was supposed to be breakfast, with my kitty cat out here, and it's absolutely beautiful. It is great. Now, listen, we have some yeah. breaking news coming through. There is a uh, traffic report, so I'm going to turn this over to Shane for just a second. Pardon, okay, the, okay. pardon the interruption. I'm Shane, the board op. I usually sit and press the buttons for the show, but we want to keep uh, you updated on the latest and breaking information, latest and breaking news, latest information in the valley. Our reporter Jade Abershon has been reporting this morning that the I-5 Grapevine Freeway has been closed in both directions. Now, the good news is she just recently gave me the update that they will be opening up the southbound lane soon. However, at the moment, both directions on the five freeway are closed. It's going to be closed on the northbound side at Lebec Road and on the southbound side of the five at Grapevine Road. This is due to a large vehicle collision that has spilled liquid chloride in the northbound lanes and also in addition in addition to the five freeway closures the westbound 138 where it meets the northbound five freeway is also closed uh, still in unknown duration cleaning is estimated to be about three to four hours with the southbound lanes on the five freeway opening soon we'll keep you updated. Yikes yikes Shane that's um you know, to add to the confusion of how we have to do things and, you know, detour or wait, um, you know, just adds to all the problems, doesn't it, Barb? It sure does. Yeah, yeah. And oh. so, you know, our, our seniors who are listening today, um, you know, the, they're, they're facing uh, a challenge. Everybody in the community is. And I think our leaders have stepped forward at City Hall uh, in giving us the updates that we need to understand uh, how we can uh, assure and make sure that we are protected. Yes, and I highly commend them for doing that. Yep, yeah, but it's uh, so important we understand social distancing. Uh, I think it's an important concept. What's been in the news lately is the mask that I am wearing. Um, you know, the controversy has been there, and I've talked to you uh, uh, before about this very early in the process of, of um, uh, all of the, the crisis going on. But, you know, my thought, and I don't want to point fingers, uh, but wearing a mask has always been uh, the barrier that we have. You know, they talk about N95 masks, uh, which are, uh, you know, the, the supposedly the best. But, you know, now we're talking about any mask, anything to set up the barrier. And even in uh, several newspapers today, it talked about masks. And there are still some doubters that say you don't ne need to wear a mask. But understand the concept of wearing a mask uh, is adding something uh, to keep that virus out of your uh, nasal and your oral uh, uh, openings that uh, could bring the virus into your lungs. So obviously, it uh, doesn't matter about the porosity, how, uh, how uh, thick the, um, uh, the material is. What matters is that there's a barrier there, and you just have to hope that if somebody walks by you, sneezes or coughs, uh, that uh, it will capture it and keep it out of your body. It's another protective measure. A absolutely, no doubt about it. Now, Robin if, has me wearing a shower cap, and <laughs> and, it, and it's okay. It's kind of I think it's blue. I think yesterday I was wearing green, uh, <laughs> but today is blue. And I do wash it because you know goes in the shower. Uh, but uh, understand that that's another barrier. You know I've you know people who know me uh, realize that I have a lot of hair, uh, and uh, that surface area of the hair. You know, in articles that I've seen, I have not heard scientists talk too much about the possibility that it could be in the hair and you could wipe, wipe your hands through your hair and then it could get on your hands. So I don't know the answer to that, uh, but uh, wearing a shower cap, you know, I hate to say it's a little hot under here, uh, but I, I feel okay doing that as a, 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 a protective barrier to not get in a nook and cranny of my hair to then go to somebody else in some way, or even myself. Are, are, have you 
encountered many of your patients who are ill? Uh, well, I have, yes, I have ill patients, but only one who has the virus. O only one of my seniors has the virus. Uh, I do okay. think there are ma did, many how, more. How did that senior get the virus? Don't know, just uh, they have no idea. And we had no idea. They just got ill. So it probably came from somebody not, not wearing a mask. When I did see them, you know, we were wearing masks. So, um, but this was before we knew that that person was positive. So we were already thinking that uh, there was, you know, there might be a problem to a certain degree. Uh, right. And indeed there was. But, you know, pe people are sick in our community and it's gonna, that number is gonna climb with the social distancing that we have to do. Um, I, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that, that will help many of us uh, from not getting this illness. But, you know, remember also that if you get the illness, uh, it might confer on you some immunity. And that's what certainly we are hoping for. There's a lot of science to this, Barb. There's a lot of science that I think uh, is undiscovered or uh, not much discussed. Um, but, and most doctors are just dealing with the problem at this point. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think we will have this solved in a year's time. Uh, I think it will diminish uh, during the summer. It might augment uh, 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 like they discussed yesterday at the uh, task force, the White House task force. It might come back in, in the uh, winter again. Uh, but we have to be mindful of it. I think our science is moving so quickly now with this, and it's so odd and funny and interesting that uh, our science uh, is there already to do some of this, but it was held back, and now that we have to expedite this, it's moving rapidly, and I I'm thankful for that. Well, <clears throat> along with science and all the exploring people, uh, doctors and scientists are doing, there are several things that we as people can do. Mm -hmm. I personally go out and walk. I've been walking up and down all of these hills. I live in the, the, the Princess Tract mm -hmm. across from Friendly Valley. It's off Sierra Highway. And I don't think there is a flat street in this housing tract. Cool. So I'm constantly walking up hills. Of course, I get to fly down them uh, when I'm down, but um, walking has really helped me. Do you know how many steps that you take? A lot of people use their cell phone and they take a certain number of steps a, a day. And of course, 10,000 is kind of the what you want to get to, to say, hey, you d really did a lot of activity today. Do you know how many steps that you take in your walks? No, I never thought about that. Yeah, I didn't realize on my phone that one of the apps that I have has been automatically uh, monitoring how many steps I take. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to look and find that app. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to, but you know what's interesting? So many other people are walking. Mm -hmm. We're all keeping our distances, mm -hmm. but I have seen so many new people that are neighbors that I've never seen before. <laughs> and it's wonderful. You yeah, know, is, we shout great. high across the street to each other. Mm -hmm. And if we're walking on the same sidewalk, one of us walks out into the street to avoid the other one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really interesting what what has happened to in this community as as well as i'm sure across the united states yeah. but the other thing too is mm -hmm. you have to eat healthy yes oh yes no doubt about that you really do and drink plenty of liquids mm -hmm. plenty that's the one thing that has gotten me is because this sitting around is not good and i get thirsty sitting mm -hmm. around more so than I do when I'm moving around. Yeah, yeah. So I'm drinking more and more water. <laughs> good, no, good for you. That's 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 great advice, Barb. Because, you know, we're told to stay home, and you know, we now have um, the computers to use. We have more communication. Uh, we can read, uh, and we can watch television. Uh, but you know, a lot of that is sitting in place. 
and to get up and really be able to move around to get the circulation going is is very important. So it is. You know, the the other thing I do also, I've started working jigsaw puzzles. Ah, yeah, that. I used to do it when I was oh first married, mm -hmm. and even when I was a little girl. That was one of the things my mom and dad always used to do, my mother especially, when dad was overseas during the war. And we always used to have jigsaw puzzles. And not it, only that, there's a strategy to it, as you know. You oh find yeah. You find the corners, then you find the edges, then, you, then it's all colors, and you put the colors together. There's, That's right. There's a strategy to it. Oh, and, yeah. And you know, when you have a thousand-piece uh, jigsaw <laughs> puzzle, that's a challenge. Oh, yes, it is. I'm going to try a 5,000 piece. One out. Piece. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's a 1,000 pieces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that is great. You know, we talk about things that we can do, and, you know, we talked about the mass. We talked about the exercise. We talked about uh, the uh, food that we eat. Uh, psychologically, you know, we also should be thinking about inter still interacting with the people around us, uh, even though that we can't um, – talk to especially family members but to make a phone call to get it send an email or get one back uh, is great communication that one should sustain uh, while we're all you know in the box so uh, you know making sure psychologically we're in contact with the people around us uh, makes a big difference Yes, it does, and I love to pick up the phone call, phone, and call my friends. Yeah. And of course, they're all there, you know. Mm -hmm. So we sit and chat for four or five minutes. Uh, what have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> or everything. Yeah. But, um, and I've been even taking my cell phone out with me when I walk, and talking to family members when I'm walking. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a real new experience. Right, and I think by by keeping our, ourselves mentally stable, by exercising and getting our circulation going, if indeed the we get exposed to the illness and get the illness, you then have to hope at that point that it's that it's something that's mild that you tolerate, you get the immunity to it, and then you're done. But you know, if you do happen to get sick from it and sicker with fever and cough and you get laid up, you don't eat well. You know, these are the times when you look back and say, hey, I walked. Hey, I, I, ate, I ate correctly. I psychologically got boosted myself up. By doing all these things, we can then uh, fight it off better. Now, you know, statistically about, you know, in reality, it's only 1% of the population that get sick and die from this, 1%. But yet, um, and you don't want to be one of them. You want to be one of the 99%. But you do want to be able to um, not suffer too much. And I do think by doing the things we just talked about, uh, it will uh, help a little bit uh, temporize that the illness to a certain degree. That's true. And the other thing, too, if you're not feeling well and you're in a chair or you're lying in bed, you can always move your arms and move your legs. Mm -hmm. You can. You can do a lot of exercise even if you're not feeling that well. Because believe it or not, extra movement will make you feel better. No doubt about it. You know, these are all the things that uh, all of our older adults should be doing, whether you be in Santa Cruz or wherever you're listening from. It's so important, and I hope you're not, you know, up at the grapevine and stuck in traffic, but I'm sure there are people listening right now who are. Uh, but, you know, if you're in your vehicle, start moving your arms around, you know, you know, doing some mental exercises. You can't quite do a jigsaw puzzle in your car, but you can You can uh, work on the physical aspects and the mental aspects of sustaining yourself uh, in this challenge that we have with this virus. That's very true. And everyone needs to keep active, whether you're a senior or not. You're stuck at home, and you just if you, even if you just walk around your house, walk from one room to the other, but keep moving because that will help keep you healthy. Mm -hmm. Drink lots of liquid. You know, I wanted to mention also this is one of the habits I think we all have. 
Barb is, you know, they've told us don't touch your face, you know, and you know, in the studio, I, I've learned, and plus, when I'm seeing patients, I'm counting how many times I touch my face, and it's such a habit for everybody because it's automatic. But I, I think part of that, and I've touched my mask three times since <laughs> we started talking, I, and I, I have it written down three times uh, because I've had to adjust it, and they say, don't do that, don't do that. But you know something, I gotta adjust it because then my nose will be exposed and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, but one of the things is, one of the things you should think about is, um, Staying away from your face. I think that whether, you know, my theory about your hair and surface area and things like that uh, can be then uh, brought uh, onto your face and then into your, uh, the passages that could go into your lungs. You know, you, you it, it can happen easily, I think. These are really, really small viral particles and they can get anywhere at any time. Uh, I think what we're doing now with social isolation and doing some of these things with the, with the um, uh, uh, mask and the, the, the uh, shower <laughs> cap and air, you know, the gowns and everything that we're doing in the hospital, you know, the, these are all important and it will slow things down. Uh, so we have to move that curve uh, a little bit and I think my hope is that we will be uh, doing that in the near future, so we'll all be back in the studio, you know, talking about how it, how it was in 2020. Absolutely, and how it was in 2020. Jean, take a picture of yourself with your mask and your plastic cap on. Yeah, well, I would like to see what you look like. Uh, uh, I think it will be better than you're used to. <laughs> Give Shane your... Give Shane your uh, cell phone and have him take a picture of you. I, I will do that. Because I would love to see it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, you know, these are all experiences that we will look back on and say, you know, what were you doing in 2020? And our Absolutely. kids, our kids will, our kids and grandkids will say the same thing. So uh, this is, I mean, it's not going to be the worst time of our lives, but it's it's fearful. It's fearful, and we're worrisome. And uh, our kids, and uh, we worry about our children and our our spouses and the people around us. Uh, so this is a time to say, okay, we're challenged though, and we are gonna we are gonna battle through ourselves through this to make sure we we survive and do okay. Yes, I know, and this is not the worst time in my life. The worst time in my life was when I was a little girl dodging bombs during the Second World War. There you go. There's a big Nothing difference. to that. Yeah, now we, the big bombs to the little bombs of this virus. That's you know, right. And the bad part is neither one could we really see nor sense until it happened. And uh, that's just a consequence of how things are, but uh, we'll, we'll sustain ourselves. Yes, we will. And Jean, I know you have to sign off pretty soon, but give Robin my love. I will do that. And Thank you. Tell everybody at the station I said hi and to stay safe. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate it. And you you also and your son. We Thank you very much. Coming on. Great. I'm Dr. Take Jean care. Dorio with my co-host Barbara Cochran on your hometown station, 1220 AM and 98.1 FM, KHTS. Social distancing slows the spread of coronavirus, so we should all stay home to lower the risk for everyone. More info at coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town Newhall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. Hi, this is Pastor Rusty from Real Life Church with a minute of encouragement. Remember that game we used to play on the playground where we'd hit the ball around the pole? We called it tether ball. Everything worked great until somebody hit the ball so hard it just unhinged from the rope. Doesn't it feel like our culture and even our world is in that right now? With coronavirus making us wonder about our economy, our work, even our personal freedom, it just feels like we have nothing to put our faith in anymore. That's why I love the words of Jesus who says, Whoever puts their trust in me is like a man who builds his house on the rock. When the storms come, the winds will not 
destroy him. Friends, if you're wondering right now how we're going to do this, we're going to do this the way that we do anything, and that is we're going to get through this together. Put your hope in the rock. If you would like prayer, text the word prayer to 661-270-7788. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one advanced audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, The Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio with uh, my co-host Barbara Cochran, who was on our show and is out and off and running as usual. Uh, this is your hometown station, AM 1220 uh, and 98.1 FM KHTS. Uh, so we're going to talk with Nola Aronson uh, from Advanced Audiology in a moment, but we do want to update uh, the uh, traffic alert that is going on now uh, in our grapevine. Shane? Thank you, Dr. Dorio. My name is Shane. I'm usually the board op. I press all the buttons. But as Dr. Dorio mentioned, we want to keep you informed. So a big traffic alert. Uh, if you're essential services and still driving around, if you're traveling to or from Bakersfield or you're going to be using the Grapevine, be advised the Grapevine I-5 freeway is closed in both directions. It's closed on the northbound side at Lebec Road and on the southbound side at Grapevine Road. This is due to a large collision involving a tanker truck and a big rig, which resulted in a hazardous Spill of liquid chloride in the northbound lanes. Now, cleaning has been going on. It's cleaning is scheduled to go for another three or four hours. And coming, uh, all of this is coming from our reporter, Jade Abishon, who has also said that they were, are hoping to open up the southbound lanes soon. But until further notice, I-5 Grapevine is closed in both directions. And this is also resulting in a shutdown of the westbound 138, where it merges to the northbound 5 freeway. So be advised, significant delays in that area. Great, Shane. Appreciate it, and welcome back. We're gonna we're speaking now with Nola Aronson. Are you there, Nola? Yes. Hi. How are hi, you? Nola. How are you? Welcome. Welcome to the Senior Hour. You know, uh, we're sure uh, having the test of time, uh, not just in the studio, but uh, in our community and around the world. And you know, you you have. Uh, uh, I advanced audiology, and I, I'm wondering, is your office open? So we are not open because, um, unfortunately, I can't even believe this, but we are not considered an essential business. So um, I was surprised to hear that news um, because when people can't hear, believe me, my phone is still ringing off the hook. So what I have done for my patients is um, if you're having trouble with your hearing aid, um, there is a cell phone number that you can call. It's 661-388-6998. That's 661-388-6998. And um, what I'm doing is if um, I can't walk you through what to do over the cell phone, I am having you come in at a certain time 
And what you'll do is the door will be locked. You'll call the phone number. I'll be inside, and um, we're wearing gloves and masks and disinfecting everything. And um, you'll put your hearing aid in a basket, and um, I will take care of it for you. Wow, that's, so, that's great. Yeah, so the other thing we're doing is we sent out um, email blasts. We sent out letters. Um, we are providing you batteries and whatever other tools that you need to keep your hearing aids working properly so that you're able to hear during this time. We are mailing um, batteries and supplies to all of our customers mm -hmm. uh, at no charge and uh, to take, make sure we can take care of everybody. And we want to know. We want you to know that we are here for you. And if it is an emergency, and if you do have a sudden hearing loss or something like that, um, that we are here for you. So Nola, you know, with my patients, you know, sometimes they have uh, certain things going on with them that are fairly run of the mill. Uh, and, you know, I can discuss with them simple things to do in terms of troubleshooting. Uh, for you, there are also um, problems with hearing uh, that, uh, that uh, patients should think about as well uh, when they start having problems. And, of course, the first thing I think about uh, when somebody's having trouble is they have too much wax in their ears. And, you know, that... Uh, that solution literally can be uh, uh, figured out fairly quickly. But what are what are some of the other things and treatments that uh, you can troubleshoot for patients if they have a sudden problem? I think uh, the second thing would be your batteries go dead. And most people know when their batteries are going down or going dead. So um, you know that's that's fairly simple. But I don't I don't wear hearing aids. And since I don't, I don't all know all the problems. So just going over things again, Nola, what are some of the things that you think um, some of our patients might face at a time like this that they can handle on their own? Okay, so one of the biggest things that's been happening as you bring up the wax problem is, as you know, when wax falls out of your ear, it just falls out. Well, when you wear hearing aids, um, it can fall into the hearing aid. Mm -hmm. So even though you change your batteries, um, we have a thing in the receiver of the hearing aid, the part that goes inside your ear. Mm -hmm. It's a little white thing that's called a wax guard. And sometimes people will change their battery and then they'll say, oh, my hearing aid's still not working. Well, it's the wax guard. And we give extra tools where you can remove that wax guard and put in a new one. And mm -hmm. that is 90% of the problems when people have been calling me that's wrong with their hearing aids. Mm -hmm. Now, did, so, you, did you say you could, they, can they then clean the wax guard themselves or does that need professional, a professional person to do that? No, they can do it themselves. They can do it so, themselves, great. So I've been walking people through that over the phone. And if you have an iPhone, we can FaceTime. I can show you on the iPhone. Right now I'm working on a new um, video system where everybody could be linked to the video that plays in my office. And we'll have it customized to show you how to, um, how to change your wax guard. So the other thing that can go wrong is the wire that goes into the ear is called a receiver. And sometimes when too much moisture and everything gets into the receiver, um, it, it goes bad. That is something that I'm handling at the office. Uh -huh. uh, you do have to come in for that. Now, so that's um, moisture, you said, but it's not like it rusts the instrument or it doesn't... Uh, um cause water damage or anything like that and and you can't use a blow dryer to dry it out or anything right but um out of all the calls i've been getting like four people went in the shower accidentally oh. all of a sudden with their hearing aids so that is something you can do if you go in for a minute and you realize you still have your hearing aid on 
them uh, get get it out, um, come out, open up your battery door on your hearing aid, take a hair dryer on a low setting, mm -hmm. and it should dry it out and it should be okay. Well, if they're wearing a shower cap like I'm wearing right now, they can cover their ears up and hopefully not get any water into their hearing aid, huh? Yeah, well, they're still moisture. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> chew, chew. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, as long as everybody is following the CDC guidelines and the precautions, when when they say safer at home, especially for seniors, if you have an underlying condition like COPD or cancer or your immune system is compromised, of course, don't go out of your house, you know, um, do things online. What we will do in rare cases, if there is a patient like that, um, we can, um, we are willing to drive to the patient's house and they can leave the hearing aid outside when they know we're gonna be there and we'll cool. bring tools with us to fix it. That is, that, that is an awesome service, Nolan. You know, that you, hopefully is, oh, sorry. <laughs> but that hopefully is in rare cases, um, but we are doing that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as long as people are wearing their masks, and everybody when they go out should wear a mask, um, and they're taking their precautions, wearing gloves, uh, washing their hands all the time, keeping anything that they touch disinfected, I think we're all going to be okay, and mm -hmm. we are going to flatten the curve. And um, I was watching a video from Czechoslovakia yesterday from a woman where they say they got a handle on this whole coronavirus thing, and the way they did it is they demanded that every single person wear masks oh. when they're out and no matter where they go. Uh -huh. And that way... No matter what, we're not infecting anybody. And um, don't you anyway. find it? Don't you find it interesting, though? I mean, in the, one of the the not local papers, but uh, the main paper, L.A. Times, uh, they have an editorial today that has a question mark: wear a mask or not? And you know, in the very beginning, the CDC said, uh, if you are ill, then you wear a mask. But of course, people didn't know that they were ill. We didn't have enough testing. So it was a vicious cycle of not knowing and then potentially exposing people. But when you saw the photos of the Asian countries, when you saw the photos of the Asian countries, you then um, saw everybody wearing a mask. And uh, we talk, alluded to this just a little while ago on this show with Barbara, uh, Barbara Cochran, that uh, you know people uh, should they wear a mask or not? And you know, we I think we all agree wearing a mask was going to be the best barrier. Not having enough masks is, you know, Nola, one of our biggest problems. When I went to uh, the nursing homes yesterday, and you know, that's headline news right now uh, with, with uh, uh, people uh, being a nidus for infection from there. When I went there, uh, I asked them, I had a mask on when I walked in the door, uh, but I asked if the patients were wearing masks, if the nurses were wearing masks, and you know what? They said the public health department was there yesterday or the day before, and uh, there was nothing from them to say they needed to wear a mask, and they did not have, they gave them 120 masks, but there are like 300 people that could be using it, and obviously that's not enough. So there is, right in the beginning, there was a shortage of masks, and uh, we have to, you know, we have to catch up with the problems that we have faced. So I think your point, Nola, about wearing masks is so important that people listen to this. Maybe not so much around your house if you live by yourself, uh, like most seniors do, but if you are gonna come in contact with people, put a mask on. How is that gonna hurt you? Just how, I don't, I don't know. But I think yeah. it's just a great suggestion. Yeah, so I just think, um, you know, safer at home means that you are safer at home, but mm -hmm. it does not mean, you know, don't exercise, don't leave your house, don't get sunshine, because 
you know, as you all read, uh, the sun is and the heat is what kills the virus. Mm -hmm. And um, you need to take care of yourself. Um, and hearing help is very important. Um, and if you do have a hearing problem, um, there's other consequences um, down the road that could, you know, hurt your health. So, mm -hmm. as you know, hearing is linked to health, um, and that's why, you know, we came out with these new healthable hearing aids uh, that are now do so many things. Um, but, you know, um, it can really um, affect you. Yes. So, at a time like this, we're not just concerned about um, hearing, but um, it is important, like if you want to um, understand what somebody's saying to you, if you, um, well, I don't recommend this, I don't recommend watching the news. <laughs> I think um, the news uh, is scaring everybody, they're doing, you know, they like this, it's uh, good marketing, but um, I'm not going to get into that, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, you know you do need to continue to hear. Yeah. So that's really important. That's why we're out there for you. Um, the phone number again is six six one three eight eight six nine nine eight. Great. Six six one three eight eight six nine nine eight. We're Advanced Audiology on Valencia Boulevard next to AAA in the Owen Patterson um, building. Great. And um, So when we, when we come back, Nola, when we come back um, from our break, let's, we'll have just a few minutes left, but let's talk about if there's anything that you or I could put together and think about what symptoms might be related to hearing that uh, could say that a person might even need to seek help for the potential of having coronavirus. So let's uh, see if there's anything there that we might be able to tap into and, and talk about with our listeners. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio on your hometown station, 1220 AM and 98.1 FM KHTS. If you're tired of your nail polish chipping a day or two after an expensive manicure, then you'll love the Gel Nail Polish Manicure now offered by Anne. Anne is a licensed manicure serving the Santa Clarita Valley in Canyon Country for over 15 years. And now she's offering the gel manicure that lasts without chipping for up to two weeks. Log on to hometownstation.com for details on how to get an amazing deal on gel nails by Anne on Restaurant Row. Or call Anne at 250-8340. Social distancing slows the spread of coronavirus, so if you have a fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going in. More info at coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hi, Santa Clarita. This is Rosemary with Beyond Harmony Med Spa with some great news about Kurt Stinson. Now, why am I telling you about a plumber? When I had a horrible plumbing situation at my house, Thanksgiving morning, house full of people, of course I called Kurt. He rushed right over, took care of our problem. The prices were so reasonable, I couldn't even believe that I was paying that on Thanksgiving Day. If you need a plumber, Kurt Stinson is the guy to call. Plumbing by Kirk, 263-6519, or visit plumbingbykirk.com. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one advanced audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Hi, I'm Pastor Rusty from Real Life Church with a minute of encouragement. Fear is always reduced when you help others rather than think primarily about yourself. 
When you get stuck in your own head, your world shrinks and your leadership becomes smaller. It's similar to a person who becomes critically ill. All their effort and energy rightfully and understandably moves to getting better. They don't have the ability to do anything other than focus on themselves. When you find ways to invest in and help others, you become a bigger and stronger leader and person. Your confidence rises and you become more effective. It may be nothing more complicated than an encouraging word or a sincere prayer, but that may be more life-giving than any of your more sophisticated strategies. During this COVID-19, we'll get through this the way we get through everything, together. If you would like prayer, text the word PRAYER to 661-270-7788. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio on your hometown station, 1220 AM and 98.1 FM KHTS. We're talking with Nola Aronson from Advanced Audiology. And, you know, Nola, these are challenging times and, you know, certainly our listeners in terms of trying to listen to us uh, have to have good hearing. But you have, uh, you have uh, advised them that should they have problems, they can call you at 661-388-6998. Uh, but of course, troubleshoot your problems uh, carefully. But if there are problems that might need help, uh, they can give you a call. Yes, they can Great. call us. We can see them on an individual basis as long as uh, everybody's wearing a mask and staying six feet apart. Mm -hmm. We keep everything disinfected. We wipe everything down. Great. We're following all the guidelines, um, but we are only seeing people on an emergency basis. We need your hearing needs to be working mm -hmm. so that you can hear during this time because it's very important. Um, and, um, you know, it's also being able to hear keeps you from, uh, although uh, many of us are staying home, um, safer at home, um, you don't want to get depressed from isolation. Right, but, exactly. But um, hearing loss is a um, symptom, too, that if you're not hearing people properly, you are um, having uh, hearing, uh, you know, you, you're going to be more at risk. Right, right. So, yeah, you do have to be careful there. You know, one of, one of the things, though, Nola, that people are doing, they're taking their temperature, they're using skin, they're using a thermometer. Some people will use the ear thermometer. They still have those. And, you know, people, sometimes there's wax in there. And we just have to alert, you know, our listeners that, you know, it could be a faulty way of, of getting, trying to get data that uh, might uh, be skewed because, you know, you, you can't get a good temperature. So we just have to be mindful of that. And of course, if your hearing is not good in one ear, and let's say you're taking your temperature in that ear, maybe it could be wax and it might give you faulty temperature as well. Yeah, so I was just reading uh, something on um, the internet here. Um, it says that um, what I was trying to say is that loneliness, anxiety, and depression from social isolation weaken the immune system, yep. which can increase the risk of getting the virus. Yep. And those with cardiovascular disease, such as high blood pressure and heart disease, are more at risk um, from dying from the virus. Mm. But these diseases are more prevalent in people who have hearing loss. Hmm. Yeah, you're, so, start, you're starting to break up for some yeah. reason. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, that's a, a problem with uh, the station or with a uh, uh, cell phone tower or something like that. But uh, listen, Nola, you're doing a great job. Uh, and what we need in this community are people like you who, who are venturing out and saying, this is what I can do to help your situation if it comes up. And I think you, the information and the connection that you have given to our listeners have been so 
worthy uh, for those who might be challenged at this time, not just from the fear of having an illness, but also from things that might go on that might not allow them to function within the, the their own home and their own community itself. So, you know, thank you, Nola. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for giving this information. Thank you for being there for this community. Uh, it's a pleasure talking with you. you. You and Steve take care, you know, the best. And uh, like everybody we've, we're telling, Nola, just uh, take care of yourself. Do the uh, things that are out there that we know are important with the masks and the uh, being uh, social distancing. I think all of this will make a big difference without um, us saying, oh, let's take this drug or let's do this test, this CAT scan, blah, 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 blah. You know, these are all the things, NOLA, uh, that the, the easier things to do that will get us through these times. And thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Everybody stay safe. And if you have any hearing issues, please contact us. We're always here for you. Great. Thank you, Nola. Pre appreciate it. Once again, 661-388-6998. That's Nola Aronson from Advanced Audiology. Thank you, Nola, very much for being on the show again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care and Nola Aronson from Advanced Audiology. Listen to us next week on the Senior Hour. Now go and enhance your quality of life.